Jolting technologies provide such a disruptive advantage that the ability to apply them across different fields, cross-contaminating and taking advantage of the increased rate of acceleration that they provide is irresistible. Well, it should not be resisted. It is an extremely beneficial effect. Last week, we saw how synthetic biology was able to solve a 50-year-old challenge thanks to the jolting technology of artificial intelligence achieving the ability uh, to predict the shapes of proteins, solving the challenge of protein folding. This week, we are going to look at how space exploration is accelerating at an increasing rate thanks to jolting technologies as well. SpaceX is designing, prototyping, and testing a new generation of spacecraft called Starship. Starship serial number 8, SN8, flew to the record-breaking altitude of 12.5 kilometers just a few days ago. And during that test flight, many different categories of new solutions were tested, which have never before been tried. And practically all of the steps of this historic test flight were successful, even though, as usual, Elon Musk lowered the expectations beforehand, saying that most likely the test would fail, it was a great success. You may have been misled by the headlines the day after if you noticed in the mainstream media, but also on some specialized websites where you may have read SpaceX test spacecraft explodes uh, during the tests. Well, indeed, SN8 exploded as it attempted landing because there was insufficient pressure uh, in the combustion chambers uh, and the engine couldn't exercise sufficient deceleration there wasn't enough jolting in the uh, final stages of the descent in order to be able to stop the craft smoothly, um, reducing its uh, velocity to zero at the exact right moment. But that doesn't matter. Luckily, uh, the Starship is all uh, automatic. There were no humans harmed. Uh, but just the final part couldn't be uh, the focus and shouldn't be the um, only thing that you remember from that, even though that is what the headlines said. There were a large number of completely novel uh, segments uh, in the operation. For example, the ability to turn off the engines and then turn them back on when needed. The uh, ability of the rocket to turn around with uh, small um, uh, nozzles on the sides uh, of, uh, uh, of its body and then coast uh, as it was descending in free fall, um, the ability to redirect itself uh, towards the landing site 
which is the exact same spot where it took off for re-entry. The ability to uh, right itself in a vertical position again, re-igniting uh, its uh, engines in order to slow its descent. And for sure, uh, many other subcomponents that may have been less uh, visible but uh, still are vital to the operations of uh, Starship in the future. So how was it possible that so many of um, untested operations went actually well and that Starship actually landed uh, in the same spot where it uh, took off even though the final velocity was not zero, hence the spectacular explosion. The reason why it was possible is because of the jolting technology of computer-based simulations. What used to be uh, numerical methods that uh, we would use in order to um, test our models have become sophisticated enough that when we go from the simulation into reality, the computer-controlled systems, our uh, IoT devices, uh, uh, controlled um, uh, either remotely when possible or within the craft itself uh, as uh, it is happening necessarily uh, on spacecraft uh, that are either uh, in a very noisy electromagnetic environment or are too far and the speed of light is not enough or uh, they are behind uh, a moon or a planet. Well, all of these systems go from being entirely simulated to being executed in the physical world very smoothly with almost no disruption in the continuity of what they perceive to be reality. Uh, there is a lot of talk about the simulation argument. Is the entire universe uh, a computer simulation? And whether it is or it is not may matter philosophically may matter uh, existentially, uh, may even uh, be testable uh, in some future. But for our increasingly sophisticated robotic companions, whether we are talking about self-driving cars or self-flying spacecraft, reality is always simulated, uh, whether uh, they are capturing data from real reality or they are being fed data from a simulated model, well, their sensors, their senses um, are unable to make any distinction. And the granularity, the sophistication, the feedback mechanisms, the learning algorithms driving the simulations themselves are now at a point where these systems are performing amazingly, unexpectedly, joltingly well. So that is what we can keep expecting. New features, new abilities to be introduced in those systems, those machines, those IoT networks that are designed and implemented, taking this into account at a rate whose acceleration is itself increasing. You remember when um, a car maker would um, affirm without any shame that it would take 10 years to develop a new car model? How was that acceptable? What would happen to our dreams of space exploration if a company like SpaceX said, 
oh, we have this Starship concept in mind, and yes, it will take us 10 years uh, before we can um, test it, uh, and uh, another 10 years before it can be uh, flown reliably, and another 10 years before uh, we have a sufficient number of them. Starship is not going to fly among the stars, but Starship is going to fly among the planets. It is going to be part of an interplanetary transport system with thousands or even tens of thousands of these amazing spacecraft flying and being reused because, of course, the ability to land the ability to be refueled in space, the ability to land on Mars and then take off with the reduced gravity of Mars with a single stage rather than in two stages, as it is needed on Earth with a stronger gravity, is forming a complete system that must be designed simulated, tested, and then implemented and delivered in 10 or 20 years. The goal of SpaceX in colonizing Mars is to establish a city on Mars with a million people or more before the end of the century. And in order to reach that goal, an increasing rate of innovation is needed. SpaceX is jolting and the successful test of SN8, the latest Starship prototype, is testimony to this jolting nature of SpaceX and the jolting nature of the new phase of space exploration that we have entered. As usual, I invite you to subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel uh, where you find the context or like uh, the Facebook page searching for the question. To become a fan, a supporter, a sponsor or a benefactor on Patreon uh, where you get early access to the episodes of the context or uh, to go to jolting.co where you can subscribe to the Jolting Technologies courses getting the first month free and to immerse yourself in the mindset that is the necessary premise in order to understand the reality that is becoming undecipherable unless you have the right tools. And these tools themselves, AI systems, robotic systems, Internet of Things, intelligence augmentation, cognitive and collective intelligence are the tools that you can leverage today in order to be an active part of the world of the 21st century. Thank you.